Coming up on Volusia Magazine, see how local firefighters train and prepare for life-threatening blazes. Meet the team keeping a watchful nose on airport security and see how the county combated the COVID-19 pandemic. Those stories and more next. Hello and welcome to Volusia Magazine. I'm Amber Osman. 2020 has been a year unlike any most of us have ever believed to be imaginable. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to be a major part of our lives. In those early days, county officials rolled up their sleeves and took on the pandemic. This is their story. Not a time to panic. We continue to work closely with all of our partners to ensure the safety and welfare of both our residents and our visitors. Please understand, we are working very diligently at this time to make sure that you are provided all of the information as quickly as it's made available. The Center for Disease Control has issued recommendations to the public to mitigate the spread of COVID-19, including canceling large gatherings exceeding 250 people. This is a uh, a, a disease that we're asking you to use common sense and inform yourself. At the end of the day, it is about the safety of our residents and the safety of our visitors. Emergencies have a way of bringing us together and bringing out the best in people. They bring out duty, dedication, and professionalism. They bring out selflessness and humanity. They bring out creativity, innovation, and new ways of providing service and meeting the community's needs. And they bring out kindness and caring. This has never been truer than during Volusia County's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Quite frankly, we didn't know what to expect. None of us did. Back in March, when COVID-19 made its unwelcome arrival in Volusia County, it quickly became apparent that this was going to be unlike anything we had ever seen or experienced before. But it was just as apparent that our employees had the professionalism, the dedication, the talent, and the compassion to stand up and take charge, to lead. We were tested and we were ready. It hasn't been easy, and our community has endured a lot of shared adversity, sacrifice, and hardship. Since March, our residents, our business community, our healthcare workers, and first responders, and our county and city governments, and our emergency management team have joined together in partnership and risen to meet the challenges in a way that I think has made us all proud. I know that I am. Volusia County is well on its way to being a better, healthier, and stronger community. This is our journey. Closing county administrative buildings, shutting down libraries, playgrounds, campgrounds, and educational attractions, restricting driving on the beach to prevent crowds, these are really painful decisions. These were painful but necessary decisions in order to contain and control the spread of the virus, protect our citizens and visitors. Our focus has always been on the protection of our citizens and visitors and making this a safe community. We ramped up our emergency operations center, activated emergency response plans, and initiated an unprecedented level of coordination with our health facilities and municipal, regional, state, and federal partners to plot out a strategy to combat this new threat. While government offices closed temporarily, I'm proud to say that our employees stepped up and found new and innovative ways to continue on with the business of serving the public without interruption. 
Our employees embody the spirit of service, and this new challenge required every ounce of their resourcefulness, imagination, and creativity, and in many instances, meant a transition to virtual programs and services. For the time being, this was our new normal. This was our first step to the road of recovery. Reopening was incredibly vital to our local residents and families, to our businesses, institutions of government, and houses of worship, to our economic well-being, and perhaps most importantly, to our community spirit. While we had to get this right, it wasn't as simple as flipping a switch, turning on the lights, and reopening the doors. With our county council leading the way, the reopening was thoughtful, measured, and strategic. It involved enhanced cleaning procedures and lots of safety retrofits. Things like sanitizing stations, new disinfecting air handlers, plexiglass partitions, and restroom door pullers. But most of all, it required a plan, what we call Relaunch Volusia. This is a highly detailed document the county developed that lays out mitigation strategies and reopening plans and action items for every one of our divisions. Then one by one, when the time was right, and with a lot of planning and coordination, administrative centers, libraries, beach vehicle ramps, and county operated playgrounds and campsites open back up. To be successful, the reopening required expanded COVID testing and a huge amount of communication with the public to let them know what to expect and what they could do to stay safe and help contain the virus. Testing sites were spun up around the county. Weekly news conferences and live panel discussions were initiated and we partnered with agencies around the county to launch a wash up, back up, mask up, public awareness campaign. After all, we're all in this together. Thanks to the county council's leadership, we've been able to put more than $8 million of coronavirus relief funds on the street and directly in the hands of our business community. For many small businesses, nonprofit agencies, and home-based businesses, the county's COVID-19 grant programs have been an absolute lifeline. In some cases, the difference between staying open and closing down temporarily. The monies that we received from the county was greatly appreciated. It certainly helped us, and hopefully, we'll get past this pandemic so that my international travel travelers as well as my American travelers can all come back to Volusia County and enjoy what we have to offer. These are real people with real jobs that we've been able to help support and stabilize, not just with the business grants, but also with distribution of over a million dollars worth of personal protection equipment that helps the businesses to stay open and ensure the safety of their customers. I wouldn't say we're back to normal, but there's no doubt that the county's efforts have helped to put our community on a positive path forward. We see it every day in a return of our businesses, our government, our educational institutions, and in the durability of our families. To be sure, there are still plenty of struggles. For many, the county has been there to lend a needed hand up with rent or mortgage assistance, with grants to support the work of our incredibly essential nonprofit agencies, including military organizations and houses of worship, and with food assistance for those who really need it. While the needs have been great, our resolve has been even greater. Resilience is no longer just a vague term or abstract concept. It represents hope and strength. It's a way of life and our roadmap to continued recovery.
As you can see, we've come a long way since March. COVID-19 has forced us to adapt, innovate, and find new ways, in many cases, better ways of doing business. Together, we will continue on a path to full recovery and new normal. I believe a better normal. The journey isn't over. None of us knows how long COVID will be around, but because of our dedicated, professional, and caring employees, Volusia County is positioned to continue meeting the challenges. Providing quality service, filling needs, and keeping our community safe. said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. When the flames are raging through a home, our Volusia County Fire Rescue Team has the right training and experience when there isn't a moment to lose. Our newest member of Volusia Magazine, David Hunt, has the details. Guys overcame a bunch of obstacles with the rain. All the, all the breakers were popping, tools were, tools were stopping because of the water and you guys still worked and as a team and got the got it accomplished so i think you guys are right now you guys are some of the best that i've worked with in a long time so i appreciate your effort i appreciate the fact that i was throwing a bunch of stuff at you fast and you guys were adapting and overcoming so thank you wait that's the end let's rewind that volusia county has had its fair share of natural disasters and back in august of 2020 an ef2 tornado ripped through the land leaving many homes and businesses destroyed. We actually had some structures fall in on people that were trapped inside their houses. So we actually had to cut some of that material away to get the people out of the houses. When we as the firefighters came in and did an evaluation and found out they were actually inside these structures. Luckily, nobody was injured severely and there was no fatalities during those tornadoes. When anomalous emergency events happen in our community, highly trained emergency personnel are prepared and ready to respond. Today, we checked in at the Volusia County Fire and Rescue Training Grounds, where a group of fire and rescue personnel are learning a specific skill set used to save lives when the unimaginable happens. Volusia County Fire and Rescue has a technical rescue team. There are firefighters that we have that go through additional advanced training on learning different technical disciplines, one of them being the structural collapse of how to operate the tools effectively. Um, one agency cannot effectively take care of a type of job like we're looking at back here for training. It takes multiple agencies. We, we have to all work together in, here in Volusia County and our surrounding communities. So we have the city of the land. We have the city of Orange City Fire Department. We have uh, the city of Deltona here, along with Volusia County firefighters that are participating in this training today, learning how to properly, effectively extricate somebody out of a rubble pile, out of a collapsed building, and get those people out safely and effectively. So there are certain objectives that we have to hit by the state that we have to make sure they meet. Uh, drilling, stitch cutting, shoring, lifting, breaching, breaking. So we're making sure they reach all of those objectives, but we split them up to give them like a final exam of what they've learned throughout the week. And that's what this is. This simulates an apartment collapse and all the objectives that we want them to hit throughout the week now culminates into one drill. And that's what they're doing now. So they've had to break concrete, crawl in, break concrete over their head, crawl up, 
crawl out, break back down, almost like a hamster trail that simulates a uh, building collapse. The training and job are not for the faint of heart. One mistake and tons of debris could come crashing down. We want to get there as quick as we can with the call that comes in. If an apartment collapsed and we know we have people trapped, we need to start really worrying about them because if they're being crushed, there's something called crush syndrome and they have a very short window of time before it's going to start affecting them. Uh, poisons are going to build up in their blood, their oxygen is going to get weak, they're not going to be able to breathe as good as they should, and they're eventually going to die if we don't get to them, even if they were in a situation where we could save them. Everybody's sore, everybody's dirty, we've been rained on, but we're working hard to get to that 230 objective and make sure we get the bingo, which is the save. It takes a special type of person to sign up for this specialized training. It takes somebody that's brave, honest, they know what, they know their, their limit, and they have to be uh, frank with themselves. They can either go or they can't. And if they can't, they need to come out, we need to get somebody else in that can go. If you're tired, you gotta know that you're tired and you gotta back out. There's no shame in saying, I need to rotate with somebody else. This is all team building. This whole exercise is a team building exercise to get a bunch of guys that don't really know each other to work together as a team. You guys were adapting and overcoming, so thank you. It's been for me, it's been a good time. I hope you guys have had a good time. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Rain, shine, sleet, or snow. This proves these heroes are ready for any situation. I'm David Hunt with Lucia Magazine. Don't let their sweet faces and friendly wagging tails fool you. The K-19 at the Daytona Beach International Airport are all business. Well, mostly all business. Joanne Magley has the story. Hi, I'm Joanne Magley with Daytona Beach International Airport and today we're going to take you behind the scenes with our K-9 unit here at the airport. You may have seen the K-9 team making rounds through the airport and while many of us want to reach out and pet these handsome K-9s, pause off. They are officially on duty. Daytona Beach International Airport has two K-9 teams. One is Guinness and Deputy Yakel. Hello. My name is Deputy Brad Yakel with the Volusia County Sheriff's Office. I'm here today with K-9 Guinness. He's one of our explosive detection canines. He's been in service here at the Daytona Beach International Airport since 2017. He's five years old, and hopefully he'll stay in service here for at least another five years for us. Guinness has only one job, but it's an important job. He is a single purpose canine unit, meaning that he, his only job is to find explosive odors. At the airport, you always hear the announcements about not leaving bags unattended. Well, when that happens, that's when the canines come in. He's deployed any time that we have like an unattended bag or package anywhere in the airport or on the property. And once we search each bag after he sniffs it, we render it safe, meaning that we check everything inside the bag. And there is a litany of items that he's come across in his career. Guinness serves on a bomb squad for the sheriff's office with four other dogs, and he and Yako get deployed all over Volusia County when there's a bomb threat. The newest member of the team is Galt, whose handler is Senior Deputy Joe Durney. Durney has been on the K-9 unit since 2008. His previous dog, Yankee, recently retired after 10 years of service. While he's enjoying retired life at Durney's home, Galt now joins the deputy at work. This is K-9 Galt. He is from Hungary, and um, he was born in uh, 2018, June 23rd, so he just had his second birthday. Um, what he's trained to detect is explosives. That's commercial explosives, military explosives, pyrotechnics, homemade explosives, pretty much anything that can detonate or burn in an explosive fashion or manner, he's going to detect it. You know, and then we're tasked to, if there is, let's say there's a bomb threat at the airport, we evacuate the airport, and then Galt and I have to go inside the airport that's been evacuated because there possibly is a device or a bomb or something of that nature in here. That's our job to find it. So it can be pretty stressful. Um, luckily, you know, nine times out of ten, you know, their hoaxes or people call them in because they have nothing better to do. And uh, there's going to be, there's going to come a time, and it's only a matter of time when they do come into something and it is dangerous, and then we're there, and then we have to take the necessary steps to make it safe again. Like Guinness and Yakel, Galt and Durney also are on the bomb squad. So what are Guinness and Galt sniffing for? Senior Deputy Durney demonstrated what Galt does when they are called to inspect an area. 
So th this is a data sheet. It's PETN based sheet explosive. And this is one of the odors that Galt is trained to detect. What he'll do is when he gets into the odor that's coming, that's, that, that's, um, that's, uh, coming from this piece of explosives, he'll smell it, he'll get a behavior change, and with him, you'll see him, he'll kind of perk up a little bit, his ears kind of, I, I can kind of see it, some people say they don't, but I can see his ears kind of perk up a little bit, his eyes get a little bit wider, and he'll start detailing or going, kind of like tracking back and forth towards where the object is. And then what, when he ultimately gets to when he pinpoints the actual source of the odor, he will give a nice indication of sit and stare. You know, he's an explosive detection dog, so we don't want him scratching at packages. We don't want him jumping up on things. Because let's face it, that's the last thing we want to do when it comes to any type of an explosive device is to move it. So we train our dogs what's called a passive alert. They'll get into their odor. They'll, hey, good boy. They'll get into, he's just saying hi. They'll get into their odor, and then once they pinpoint it, he will stop, sit down, and just stare at that whatever they are. It could be a package, could be a car, could be anything. I've always liked animals, I've always had pets, I've always had dogs, and um, it was an eye-opener at first because I went into it thinking, you know, hey, you're gonna have a dog, you're gonna bring a dog to work and play with them all day, but when you sit down and think about it, it's work. But at the end of the workday, both Guinness and Galt are just typical dogs. He's your typical lab, he loves to eat, and he loves to play. And do you, do you get to take him home with you at night? Yep. He so, comes home with me every single night. He's like having a permanent seven-year-old attached to your side all the time. So it makes it a, for a fun 12-hour day. For Evolution Magazine, I'm Joanne Magley. The Spartan Corporation has had a presence in Delian Springs for more than 30 years. But now it's home. The defense industry leader recently moved their headquarters from Illinois to Volusia County. Gary Davidson has more. Today represents a textbook example of a public-private partnership that benefits the entire community. Everybody is a winner here. The business community is a winner, the local economy and the job market is a winner, and the environment is a winner. This is Gary Davidson with Volusia County Community Information, and today we're in Deleon Springs at the headquarters of Spartan, where among other things, anti-submarine detection devices are manufactured for the U.S. military. With more than 600 workers, Spartan is one of Volusia County's largest private industry employers. And with the help of an economic development and water quality infrastructure grant from the Volusia County Council, Spartan recently completed a major overhaul of its on-site wastewater treatment facility to expand capacity. But more importantly, the new treatment system will significantly reduce nitrogen discharge and serve as an added environmental protection for the DeLeon Springs spring shed. Spartan has had a footprint in Volusia County for more than 30 years now, providing good jobs for residents while also ensuring the company is a good neighbor and a good corporate citizen. And this project is just one example of that because Spartan knows, as we know as well, a good environment isn't just good for the community, it's also good for the economy. The two really do go hand in hand. With Volusia County partnering with Spartan to improve wastewater systems, protecting our sensitive watershed and natural springs, together Volusia County is joining Spartan to address environmental challenges and support your proven record of capturing the market. When we talk about wanting good, high quality jobs, the type of jobs that you provide here at Spartan is exactly what we're talking about. This water quality infrastructure grant program that the County Council put in place is another tool that we can use to help the environment and help local businesses like Spartan grow and thrive. We recently made the decision to move our corporate headquarters from Chicago to here in West Volusia County. We did that because of the wonderful business environment here in Volusia County. We did it because of the wonderful support we get from the county government, uh, the county council, and our congressman, Mike Waltz. But mostly we did it for the people. The people here in Volusia County are fantastic. We have uh, just under 600 Patriot employees that we're just so thrilled with, and we love it here. Everybody has won in this project by everybody coming together. We're here to, to uh, provide any support that we can anytime. Thank so you very thank much. you for very very grateful. We want to thank you for investing in the area. And we're a critical source, an uh, unreplaceable source, for the United States Navy 
in their undersea warfare mission. There's actually four buildings that are connected, so it's a contiguous, but it's four separate buildings. Can I ask you? Please make sure you stay to the right of this green line on the floor here. When we decide to get ready and expand, we, we should help pull, you know, we should have a good capacity. Our workforce would be great for a STEM program. Yeah, you uh, absolutely would. Program. We've got, every, you know, any type of engineer, we've got senior business folks, we've got every, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it would be neat to kind of branch out to the local school system here on more of a STEM. We can help program. you with that. That'd be great. So thank you very much for all the help you've done in being successful for our company, but most important for our nation. The county grant program serves the dual purposes of clean water and encouraging job growth in key employment sectors such as defense contractors and the aerospace industry. Stay connected with the latest Volusia County news events and updates on our social media channels. Like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Catch up with previous stories on YouTube or just head over to our website, volusia.org.